It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. I'm your host, Pat Brown, and joining me as always, my line mate, Devin Little. Devin, how you doing? Uh, always good to be here with you, Pat. How you doing? A great way to kick off a weekend, as always. And we are thrilled to have you with us for another grind. I am excited to welcome back a great reporter and even better human being, the Hockey Writers Credential, New Jersey Devils reporter and Professional Hockey Writers Association member, Christy Ooh. Flannery. Christy, <laughs> how you doing? What an honor. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I would say the honor is all ours and thank you for taking the time to join us and talk some Red Wings hockey. Uh, I have to say we set the stage. There is to be no mention of the 1995 Stanley Cup final, just uh, (laughs) just to be clear. So um, with that, we want to remind you at home really quick. This show is being brought to you by Morning Skate, a daily newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday through Friday. One of our panelists, not named Pat or Devin, may also write for Morning Skate. <laughs> um, remember, this newsletter is jam-packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. It's your daily dose of news, rumors, history, funnies, quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. Just a little hockey fun information brought to you every day or weekday, that is, from the hockey writers. You'll see a link down below in the description. Click on it, sign up, start getting the newsletter on Monday. You won't regret it. I promise. <laughs> So all of that said now, man, we've got a jam-packed show. There has been a lot that has happened this week, but we are going to start off as always with that oldie, but goodie, one good, one bad from the week. I'll make mine pretty short and sweet because we've got more pressing things to talk about. But my one good from the week is going to be Jacob Vrana returning uh, three goals in two games. We'll talk about him a little, uh, a little bit more later, but, um, but how, how does it get any better than that? Um, and then my bad, unfortunately, we learned today on Friday that Robbie Fabry tore his ACL and what a bummer on so many levels for him. He worked so hard. He's dealt with some of these injuries in the past. He just signed uh, an extension to stay with the wings. I was kind of stumping for him as an alternate captain for next season. Um, and he's been one of the lone bright spots the past few games, to be honest. So uh, get well soon, Robbie. Uh, bummer to bummer to uh, see that news today. So Devin, we'll come over to you. One good, one bad from the week that was. Let's hear it. Well, to start, I'll, I'll go bad. Uh, my bad, and I think he knows he falls in this category based on how he reacted to that shootout loss against the Wild. Mm-hmm. It's Alex Nedeljkovic. Um, I... I think that own goal against the uh, Minnesota wild is just the perfect example of when it rain, it pour, when it rains, it pours. Cause uh, dude has just not looked like how he did, you know, even a couple months ago, a couple months ago, I could make an argument. He was their best player. And now uh, whether it's him and that or Grice and that wings just aren't getting saves. And I think that's a big reason why uh, the team does not look anywhere near as good as they did, you know, even two weeks ago. So sure. Um, hoping he can turn it around and I have full faith that he actually can do that. Um, it's, it's way too early to uh, get too down on him. And then as for, um, my good. (sighs) Choo choo. Uh, (laughs) Lucas Raymond also scored two goals in that game against the wild. And, uh, you know, I've been saying this a couple, a couple times now, it seems like he's out of that, uh, that lull he was in. Um, and yeah. I think, I think seeing Michael Bunting pass him on the rookie rookie scoreboard, uh, may have a little fire on him under him a little bit. So, uh, looking forward to seeing a strong finish for, uh, Lucas Raymond. That makes sense. You know, I'm just grateful. You saw the blood on the ice from the back of his head after that little skirmish in yesterday's game. So grateful. Obviously he just got stitched up. It was nothing serious. And, um, it was good to see him back out on the ice for the third. So good stuff, Devin. Christy, over to you. You don't need to be Red Wing set- centric if you don't want to. <laughs> one good, one bad from the week that was. What you got for us? Okay, so my good is just it's not Detroit Red Wing centric, but we have to talk about just how many hat tricks were scored this week. 
It was just an wow. ins- it was just an insane <laughs> amount, and we can't even forget the fact what Jace what Robertson did for Dallas. Yeah. Um. So that was just yeah. a lot of fun seeing you know like Anders Lee scored his first career hat trick. So that was just a lot of fun. And my bad is Detroit giving up. What was it like fifteen goals in two games? Oh, it, it felt like more. I'm sorry, somehow. I had felt to like bring more. it up. But oh no, yeah, we'll be was, talking. There's, there's plenty there was, to talk about for sure. Yeah, that was, and that's coming from a, like you know a doubles fan. That was that was bad for you guys. <laughs> oh, I save your pity, save your pity. <laughs> um, but no, really, really good, uh, actually. Clearly the three of us didn't participate in any of those hat tricks since all three of us are wearing hats. Right now. <laughs> um, I was going to say too, Christy, to your point, even yesterday's Minnesota Detroit yeah. game, there were three players on a hat trick watch yep. yesterday because yep. Verona had yeah. two, uh, Raymond had two and Boldy yep. had two, three yep. players yep. on hat yeah. trick watch. It was a crazy week. Yeah, it really was. I mean, Jacob Chikrin scored twice. Uh, in consecutive game, eh, maybe I, I think twice in consecutive yeah. games, wild stuff, wild <laughs> stuff. So, all right, we are through that and we've got just a lot of, a lot of buzz to talk about. And we are going to start with Jeff Blashill's job security, which we haven't talked about surprisingly in a while, but it needs to be brought up again. Let's talk about the second most tenured coach in the NHL, who's only had one season above 500 back in 2015. Lately, the losses have been plentiful and borderline embarrassing. Nine to two to the Coyotes is not the type of effort you expect any team to put out, let alone the Red Wings. Has he lost the team? He's been steadfast during the rebuild. Uh, You got to look at the fact that Eisman, if he would have wanted to make a move by now and get rid of him, he would have. So he's probably not going to lose it, or is he? Devin, we're going to start with you. Should fans be concerned, or should Jeff Blaschel be concerned about his job? I don't think there's any fan in Detroit that's concerned about his job security. (laughs) Uh, But no, uh, for me, when it comes to this question, I always go back to the 2019-20 season. And the reason why is because that was Eisenman's first year as general manager, right? And the Red Wings were hands down the worst team in the league. If there was ever like a golden, you know, clear shot opportunity for him to can Jeff Blaschel and put his own guy in there, that was it. Like, and no one would have questioned it. Yep. Um, but no, he kept him and he even gave him, gave him an extension. Uh, I've said this on the show before. I don't, if, if this move is coming, I don't see it being a reactionary thing. I think it's going to be a very methodical decision on Eisenman's part. It's, he's going to want to talk to everybody that he can for the role. And he's going to want to make sure that it's, you know, a, a coach that is going to be around for the long term. He's not going to just plug in a guy that might be around for two years. I don't think you fire Jeff Blaschel in season regard, unless things completely go up in smoke because, like I said, you want to interview as many people as possible, and that's not necessarily possible while you're in season. So I think Blashill is safe through the rest of the season. Now, once it you know is the off season, we might reconvene and discuss it a bit more. But as it is right now, I'm not worried about it. And the Red Wings, to Blashill's credit, the Red Wings have had a really good job, or done a really good job this year of coming back and not letting losses snowball over time i think the longest losing streak they've had this season is four games so as long as they can stop the bleeding like that over the rest of the season i think he's going to keep his job could you imagine the title interim coach alex tangay because i don't know about that (laughs) interim red wings coach alex tangay i just i don't know how that sounds and, and that's part of it too. I don't think that they have, you know, Tangay or Huda, I don't think either of them fit as an interim yep. coach. Yep. Uh, ben Simon in Grand Rapids, I'll tell you right now, the fans here in Grand Rapids want him gone. So I don't think he's the guy you bring up to uh, film for Blashill either. There's nobody in house. Maybe Steve Eiserman takes a page out of Scotty Bowman's bag of tricks and becomes GM coach. How about that? There you go. There you go. All right. So we got to get to our guest, Christy, from the New Jersey perspective, what you've seen of the Red Wings this season Mm -hmm. does Jeff Blashill need to worry about his job status being an NHL coach I think is just the strangest thing because we all know they're hired to be fired and we know the coaching carousel is a thing that happens every season but I think what people forget when they go on these rants about firing the coach is kind of what Devin said like who's going to replace them (laughs) 
yeah. right now, like you have to really consider that. And I believe Detroit, they started out pretty good. I mean, I don't, they were never like a top team, but did they, in the earlier, you know, a couple months, did they perform better than expected because of their rookies or were they kind of where fans expected them to be? Oh, they were definitely exceeding expectations. Yeah. And that kind of comes to my point of the same coach that got that out of them is going through this right now. So is it a matter of the coach's message not coming across or is it just the team's not executing on the ice? Because I know that's been a thing with like the Devils too, with their inconsistency is, oh, the coach isn't getting through to the players, but then you see them have a really great win and it's like, well, it's the same system, it's the same message. So there might just be a disconnect, but I think his job is safe. I think that's that's a good perspective. I would also point to Dylan Larkin's resurgence this mm-hmm. season, along yeah. with the performance yeah. of rookies, Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond. And how can you say, even though they've, they've lost, what, five straight, I think, and seven of eight or something to that effect, you look at how some of these players are performing and how Larkin has had a bounce back year, and it's hard to say they're not responding to him. Mm-hmm. Um, so all interesting stuff. Uh, I'm with you. I don't think we see at this point uh, a change in season it wouldn't make sense you're not trying to light a fire at this point um and frankly if the red wings are going to miss the playoffs the more losses the better at this point so um stuff to think about stuff to think about but we need to move on because the wings have other issues other than just their coaching let's talk about goaltending because what has happened you saw and and Devin, he was one of your bads this week. Alex Nadelkovich was, he had some smatter earlier this season for Calder talk. There was Calder chatter and man, he's just laid an egg lately. Um, and then you look at his, his uh, stats on the season, 42 games played. He's 15, 17 and six with a 3.23 GAA and 0.901 save percentage. I mean, a lot of that has been due to some recent bad games, yeah. but I think in my opinion, the highlight there is the 42 games played, you know, Ned hasn't played this many games in a season. He hasn't had to have been counted on. And you look at Thomas Grice, who's only played 22. He's eight, nine and one with a 3.65 GAA and 0.888 save percentage. And Ned is doing the lion's share of the work. So from my perspective, there's not a goaltending problem. There's a backup goaltending problem. There's not ample support for a guy like Alex Nadelkovich to be able to come in. He shouldn't be a one a or a one guy. He should be a one a guy, in my opinion. Devin, we come to you. Do the Detroit Red Wings have a goaltending problem? You know, and to kind of continue on from the last topic, what's how's that old saying go? You know, show me a good coach. I'll show you a good goalie. Well, <laughs> what happens when you're not getting goaltending? The coach looks terrible, doesn't he? Um, I completely agree with you, Pat. I think that the Red Wings really need another guy that they can turn to and give Ned just a mental break. Because he's clearly, you know, he's off his game right now. But then you throw in Grice and he lets in two goals on three shots. And Blash was on the bench going, what do I do? So then he throws Ned in because at least Ned's, like, been their best player at one point in time this season. Uh, I, I think that the backup position is going to be a very key thing to look at going into the offseason because of this. If, uh, if Ned can't be a guy that starts 60-plus games a season, uh, you need somebody who can play – you know, go one A, one B with him. And right now Grice is showing he's not that guy anymore. Um, yeah, I, I think he summed it up perfectly, Pat. You know, I think uh, something I want to call out is their frustration with Ned. He almost started a goalie fight against Minnesota. Yeah. That was exciting. And then Devin, <laughs> you alluded to it, uh, shattered his stick on the post after you hate to see that after a shootout loss too, because you hate, for that to all rest with the goalie you always kind of feel bad but um clearly some frustration so christy we come to you and i'm going to throw out one little tidbit the red wings have allowed as of taping 216 goals this season which is the second most behind only the montreal canadians 217 so by one goal the red wings have not allowed the most in the league so christy do the Red Wings have a goaltending problem? 
I'm going to say yes, because from what you're talking about and what Devin's talking about, and again, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it kind of is similar to the devil situation where you don't, well, I mean, we have no goaltenders right now. We went through like seven. So until you guys get to that point, you're in good Arizona, shape. thanks you for Wedgwood, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> we don't too talk soon? about that. Too soon? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fun down here in Phoenix. <laughs> well, actually, I think our goaltender is ranked better than both of yours currently in the hey South. So, hey Wow. Um, the gloves um, are coming off. <laughs> but I I get really, the 1A, 1B kind of fascinates me because I had an off-the-record conversation with Ken Danico earlier in the week, and he was stressing about how important it is to have an NHL-ready goaltender that has the mentality to kind of push through and really want that position. And I feel like if Ned is comfortable taking that step back, I I don't know how that's going to work with like, you know, just being mentally in the game and, you know, not wondering if you're going to start, if it's going to be the one a or the one B. And I don't really think that worked in Las Vegas. So that kind of is intriguing to me of wanting a one a one B instead of him pushing himself to be the guy, but having that stability as the backup, that'll be, that'll keep things competitive in the locker room, but not questioning night after night if I'm in or if I'm out. So I don't know what the solution is. I think you guys are obviously much, you guys have much more knowledge about the team than I do, but that's my concern going in with the, with that kind of concept. Not only is that fantastic perspective but look at you name dropping the off the record conversations <laughs> literally <over here>. like <laughs> look at just, you name dropping that's should fantastic. i have just said i talked to a you know a you know a retired it's former great player. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. i love it i love it that's why I, you're uh, here we love it <laughs> I had an off the record uh, conversation with my mom the other day, but that's, it's not as cool, but you know, I did. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm that was so very sorry. good. That I is hope my point. I hope my point came across after all of that. <laughs> you, know, you know, and it is that type of humor that you're going to get in the hockey writers morning skate. So make sure you go over to morningskate.io So you don't miss the best daily hockey newsletter on the planet. It's delivered oh every God. weekday at 8 a.m. Sharp. <laughs> Be the first at home to know what's happening in the world of hockey. That's all I got to say. Morningskate.io. You'll see a link. You'll see the graphic. Go there. Sign up because it's awesome. Oh, I mean, what a segue. segue. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they pay me the big bucks. What can I say? For sure. So, for sure. <laughs> now let's uh, look. We talked about some depressing stuff. Let's take a look on the bright side because we talked oh. about it to begin with. Jacob Vrana is back and he's back with a vengeance. My friends, three goals in two games. This after somebody who shall remain nameless may have said he's not a point per game player. Uh, well, he shows he's shown me early on. What a, despite the ugly losses, uh, what a spark he has been for the Red Wings offense. It's been nice to see him uh, having early success in his return. So Devin, we'll start with you here. He's got 24 games left to play. What do you expect to see out of Rana for the rest of the season? Well, you say, you know, uh, when when somebody said he's not a point per game player, there's also somebody else who will remain nameless that was like, oh, he's probably going to be rusty. So give him a few games to uh, get going. <laughs> Three goals in two games. Come on. Yeah. This dude's a, this dude's an animal. Yeah. Um, I, I think the biggest thing real quick for me is that uh, the second power play actually is like a threat now. You've got, uh, you know, you got your usual cast of characters on that first power play, but then you've got Vrana and Zadina playing off of each other on the second power play. And when you know it, the Dean has assisted on two of Vrana's goals. Ha ha. Um, more it, to come later. More to come later. Exactly. Um, what do I expect? I, it's really hard not to like all of a sudden start saying, uh, you know, 50 goals in 25 games, like we said a couple weeks ago. <laughs> uh, and that's obviously being unrealistic, but I, <laughs> If this dude isn't going to push for like a good solid 15 to 20 goals, I don't like he's, he's going to try. He's yep. uh, they, they, the Red Wings don't have a score like him on the roster anywhere else. And it is uh it's crazy to think where this team might be if they had had him the full season. Wouldn't that be something if he somehow got to 20 goals on the season? And I, I mean, it's, it is lofty, but 
Um, he's shown he's capable. He was a point per game player yeah. last season for the Red Wings, 11 and 11, if I'm not mistaken, 11 yeah. points in 11 yeah. games. So he's capable. Christy, got to get your take on this. <laughs> Jacob Arana, three goals, two games, 24 games left in the season. What do you expect to see out of the lad? I expect to see a better team on the ice. I don't like to put too much pressure on an individual player when they come back from injury because you really don't know if they're 100% when they come back. But I do expect it to be a better Detroit Red Wings lineup with him in it. And like Devin said about the power play, like it's so important to have two units that can go out there and at least be a threat. Even if, you know, you don't want that lopsided, you know, unit one and unit two. So just better. I expect a lot better. I like it. I think (laughs) Red Wings Nation certainly agrees and and we've seen it i you know the the results aren't there on the score sheet for a plethora of reasons but verona has made his impact already so good stuff good stuff good perspective all right well let's flip the tape here because we're going to talk about somebody who uh devin was just name dropping a little bit the ever polarizing philip zadina and credit to you you guys at home who come to his defense (laughs) pretty often we've talked a lot about potential destinations or why he should be traded so we're going to flip the script (laughs) and Devin we're going to start with you why should the Red Wings keep Philip Zadina as opposed to trade him as we've been talking about for the previous few weeks well the biggest thing for me is he's he's an he's an RFA at the end of this year right um, yep. I, he's having a down season. There's no way around that. If you resign him, he's not going to break the bank. You're probably going to get him on a two year deal that has like a one and a half million cap hit. That is the kind of deal that you want on the Red Wings books to maintain cap flexibility now and into the future. It's a prove it deal. And it's a deal that you can move on from if you know, you want to give him another look and he just doesn't make it work. I think that uh, just to maintain cap flexibility and, you know, get optimum return on your uh, investment, you keep them because, you know, you're, it's either him or some dude that you can sign for $4 million. $4 million. Yeah. I'll take the 22-year-old that uh, still has upside. Um, and then the other thing, too, and this, this, I think, is the overarching thing. The name of the game from the beginning of the Iser plan is Patience. And to give up on a 22-year-old because he's having a down season, that's impatience. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, one season, you know, just because he's not living up to what we all thought he was going to be, it takes time. He might still get there. He might not. But to look at a 22-year-old who is far from a finished product and be like, this dude doesn't have it. Get rid of him. Trade him for pucks. It's impatience. (laughs) And that's not what this rebuild is about. So I... I'm very much in the keep them camp. And that's two of the many reasons why. I think that makes sense really quick. I want to put in my two cents on why the Red Wings should keep Philip Zadina as well, because number one, you called it Devin. He's young. He's an RFA. And I think one of the most important points here is you're not selling high. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, He he is not reached his potential and you would be giving up the rights to a very talented young player who frankly put a lot of the pressure on himself rightfully or or absolutely wrongly. He put a lot of the pressure on himself with some comments he made after the draft. Um, The other thing is he hasn't really played and no offense to anybody else in the Red Wings, but he hasn't really played with a whole lot of talent. And when he got his little preview in February, he played with the top line. He produced rather consistently. And there is some merit to that. And you can look at it two ways. Right. Because uh, in one way, yeah, he's playing with more talent. So you're going to produce consistently. It's why Travis Boyd is playing very well between Nick Schmaltz and Clayton (laughs) Keller, you know. Um, But on the flip side of that, he could have he could have absolutely laid an egg there and not uh, played well. But he rose to the occasion. So I think it's worth seeing re-signing him on a reasonable deal and seeing what he can do with better talent. Mm -hmm. So thanks for letting me get that off my chest. Christy, coming over to you, make a case for the Red Wings keeping Philip Zadina as opposed to all of the trade chatter that we've heard lately. Well, I do agree that you're not going to be selling high. So he's 22. And if there is another player that, you know, there's a little bit of patience, but really had a breakout season at 23 is Jesper Bratt. 
He was no. very similar where he was kind of just like he was in the mix, wasn't really at the top of the team with scoring. And even this season, he started out really, really slow. And then all of a sudden he, he literally, I don't even know what happened. He became like, like a savior for New Jersey. And if you can't really write a 22 year old off and he w- he was drafted sixth overall, I believe for yeah. Detroit. I think there's a, a uh, yeah, there's a high expectation. Cause I think that's similar to Pavel Zaka is they're picked so early in the draft and they have kind of like this black cloud that carries them that they don't perform. And, but we also know what a change of scenery can do. Look at William Carlson. He had what 25 points with Columbus and then went to Vegas and got 78. So I, it would really suck for Detroit fans to trade him so low and then have him get that change of scenery where he doesn't have that black cloud from the draft and then he blossoms. So you have to hold on to him at least a while longer. And if you're going to trade him, get more out of it. Yeah. Christy is bringing the heat and dropping the names. Look at that. I love the Jesper. <laughs> I love the Jesper Brat comparison good. down That's to really the good. age. That was yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. So (laughs) let's bring this show home. And we've kind of got, I don't want to call it rapid fire. You guys can, can talk as much as you want on these last two points, but we're going to talk about um, the, the blue line a little bit here because, well, I don't know if you guys have ever had a bad birthday, but Danny, <laughs> ah, he didn't see that one coming. Uh, Danny DeKaiser had a pretty lousy 32nd birthday because he didn't even get to blow out the candles before he was placed on waivers. Um, so tough way to spend your birthday as to no one's surprise. He cleared and uh, just calling out some basic statistics before Devin, we come to you uh, six points all assists and a minus 12 in 43 games, the much maligned DDK. We all know, um, you know, you love him or hate him or you're in his court or you're not, but um, there he is cleared waivers was actually placed on IR after clearing waivers. But Devin want to come to you first. What's Danny DeKaiser's next step? Where does he go from here? How does he fit in this organization? If he does. Well, a key thing, um, you know, he's on injured reserve now. And I I think a key thing is one, it's not long-term injured reserve, long-term injured injured reserve. You could stay there for the rest of the season, right? Injured reserve. You could come back. And it's also important to note that he was skating at practice today. Um, and it's also third point. Good to note that the Red Wings are probably going to make some deals at the trade deadline. Yep. Um, you know, we talk about Nick Letty all the time. He's probably going to get moved out. Um, another guy we're going to talk about here shortly. Does he stay? Does he go? Uh, point being is that I don't think we've seen the last of Danny DeKaiser this season. Uh, I, I think it's obvious that at this point that, uh, this is going to be his last season with the Red Wings. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it is what it is. Um, and I'm glad that, um, the organization seemed to have the respect for him, uh, and mind you, he's an alternate captain. You don't get that for not being respected in the organization. Um, but it, 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 I liked that they didn't do him the disservice of sending him to the AHL. Um, that's it, it, it wouldn't have. They they need the guys down there to play, and that wouldn't have you know that that's not where he wants to end his career. He wants to end his career in Detroit. He might still right. play after this, but the point being is that if if he can end his tenure with the Red Wings with the Red Wings. He probably should. And I'm glad to see that uh, it played out that way. Good call. And I think it's worth noting uh, almost uh, though. We don't certainly know the exact reason. It seems that he was waived at the time to create room for Verona's return. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just to be clear for those of you watching at home, he wasn't waived out of spite or anything. They, they needed to make room on the roster. Um, so Christy, Danny DeKaiser, what do you make of this whole situation? He's, poured his heart and soul into yeah. Detroit and then gets waved on his birthday. Where does he go from here? <laughs> it, I actually really like him and it just, he's the longest tenured Red Wing on the team. Correct. You guys yes, can all comment is. to her. Correct. Make sure you direct your comments to <laughs> Christy about that. Okay. Thank you. He is, he is um, the longest tenured Red Wing. I, I feel bad for him because I think he's a player where just his injury is just mounted and it's just, it's too much at this point. And yeah. I, I agree with Devin. I think it would be great to see him just take an extreme, if he is going to get back on the ice, an extremely limited role. Cause I think even as a person, he's really good to have in that locker room. He's good to have around like the younger guys. Um, but I think like 
coming back from back surgery, it's just one of those things where it's really hard to do. And sure. It's just, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate kind of where his career kind of turned a little bit, just with the injuries mounting up. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And, you know, I always liked the guy too. I thought he was brought into a tough, a very tough scenario asked Mm -hmm. to do way more than anybody ever should have asked him to do when he was young. What was that? 2013, I think. And he did it. I mean, he did it and it was impressive. And, you know, you got to tip your cap and thank him for everything he's done for hockey town. He's been a great advocate for the city, for the team. He goes about his business the right way. And I agree with both of you. I hope we get to see him maybe with a, a swan song in the wing wheel and, and send him off the right way. Cause he's not coming back. So, yeah. all right. So we're going to finish our show with one of the newest, if not the newest addition to the red wings, Steve Eiserin surprised some people by claiming Ali, you levy off of waivers and um, claimed it from the Panthers where he had 10 games in this season, very young, 33 games overall. Uh, three points, I think two goals, one assist and 33 career games, uh, 2015 first round draft pick taken fifth overall by, uh, the Vancouver Canucks and will be a restricted free agent following this season. Miss our, uh, line mate, uh, Melissa Boyd. Uh, I know, uh, Montreal Canadians fans were a little riled up that they didn't get a chance to claim him. So, ha ha. Love you, Mel. Um, (laughs) But um, let's make some sense of this claim uh, before we close the show. Devin, want to start with you. Uh, Good pickup for you, Levy. Kind of a head scratcher. What was Iserman thinking? Give us your best GM impression. Uh, Well, first things first, it's a waiver pickup, so it costs them nothing, right? Uh, I, I, I have all the time in the world for waiver pickups because if they work, they work. If they don't work, it costs you nothing and you can send them right back to where it came from. Um, but this is a 23 year old who's only, you know, a limited amount of games in the NHL drafted fifth overall in 2016 ahead of some really good defensemen, Charlie McAvoy, even Philip Ronick. Um, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. He was drafted ahead of all of them. He was kind of a consensus pick as the top defenseman in that class. Um, and then injuries happened to him. Um, if it wasn't one thing, it was another, it kind of just completely derailed his career. Um, and he, he got a good look in Vancouver, not like, you know, a full blown look, but he did get a look. He only played 10 games with, with uh, Florida this year. So I, yep. I still don't think he's gotten a really like good, clean, fair shake at making the NHL. And I think that, a, you know, a young up and coming, still building team like the Red Wings is kind of the exact situation that he needs to be in because the Panthers are trying to win a Stanley Cup. They're probably, they probably they don't really have room for our 23 year old that's still trying to figure it out. Huh. Um, I, I think that all, all, all in all, if it works, then you've got a 23 year old with some good upside that you can, uh, you know, put on your, uh, on your blue line, even if it's just as a bottom pairing guy, mm-hmm. if it doesn't work, you can send him back right where he came from or, and I know Pat, you and I've kind of talked about this. It could be a part of a trade in a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. It's just a free asset that you can now just kind of do with what you want to. So I don't see it as a bad pickup at all. I think that's really good perspective. Uh, Christy, you've got the last word on today's show. Um, you levy six foot two, 182 pound big boy. Where does he fit in or what is Eisenman thinking when he claims him off of waivers earlier this week? I think Devin said it best. So the only thing I'm going to add is that one defensemen take longer to develop in the NHL. We all know this. And on a rebuilding team where there's also other rookie defensemen, I think it's a really, for right now, it's a good fit. And it's like he said, it's just an asset that you could just do whatever you want with. I I think that's very well said. Uh, Again, to echo Devin, 33 games, right? 23 with Vancouver, 10 with Florida. How can you judge what a 23-year-old is capable of in 33 games. So I think you guys hit the nail on the head. Christy can't thank you enough for taking the time to join us. (laughs) Always great to have you on. And then you at home, in case we haven't convinced you with our first two plugs, go sign up for morning skate. You'll get to relive every goalie fight or near goalie fight that happens the night before. So 
go to morningsgate.io, sign up for Morningsgate, start getting that newsletter on Monday, and then make sure you circle back around and check us out next time. We really appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you next time. Cheers.